Blog Talk Radio. Hi folks, this is Mark Wilmot, singer-songwriter of the Redstone Ramblers, owner of Trademark Instrument Repair, and proud supporter of the Paige Roberts Show on Intercom Radio. Do you want that old acoustic to play like butter again? You want to get that stretch you got from your dad hot-rotted? Or maybe you want to put a pickup in your banjo? You can contact me for all your TLC. I'll be there for your instrument when it needs me. You can check me out at Trademark Instrument Repair on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, and remember, support your local songwriter. We're playing tunes that make you grin. Our music better than it's ever been. So think of us when you need a show. We're at WIRN Intercom Radio. Ever since we met I have worshipped the ground That your feet have touched Just to be pushed around I should know by now You're not here to stay It's something I can't get past And it's killing me I just want to believe You'd be there for me Cause one day I hope you'll see What your love's doing to me It's worse every day As you inch farther away Cause I don't know what to say I remember the walks That we used to take And coffee in the morning Just after coming awake And now those are replaced With angry words flowing free And I don't know what to do Help me make you I just want to believe That you'd be there for me Cause one day I hope you'll see What your love's doing to me It's worse every day As you inch farther away Cause I don't know What your love doing to me It's worse every day As you inch farther away Cause I don't know what to say Hey 
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Paige Roberts Show. It is Tuesday, October 24th, 2017. Um, tonight, my featured artist is Navy veteran singer-songwriter Philip Browser, uh, born in Washington State, born and raised in Washington State. I usually give a little bit of an introduction, but I'm trying to change things. Oh, and by the way, I am Paige Roberts, your host. I've been forgetting that, but anyway, I have been, I usually do a little bit of an introduction on our um, featured artist, but I've been getting to where I'm trying to lay low on that just because it kind of cuts into the talking time. So on the following me, I have singer-songwriter, blues man, Philip Browser. Hello, Philip. How are you? And welcome to the show. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. And if I could uh, say, too, uh, just one small correction. My last name is pronounced Broussard. Ah, thank you for that correction. <laughs> we had to get it right. But I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. Mm-hmm. That's no problem. No problem. I don't take myself too seriously. Don't worry. <laughs> awesome. Well, I guess while we're at it, Philip, we need to go ahead and give a shout out to Michael Stover, NTS Management Group, for putting this together for us tonight. Um, we uh, support Michael as well as NTS Management Group supports the Paige Roberts show, which is awesome. So thank you, Michael Stover. And I know yeah, he supports you. you as well. <laughs> Exactly. Now, with NTS, I believe it is Andrea Wong is your management. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So Andrea Wong manages manages it. Uh, manages me, I suppose, in my in my playing schedule. Right. So they they are still connected in a way. So that's all. Awesome. Oh yeah. But yeah. Absolutely. We appreciate it because that's what keeps that's what keeps us going here on the Paige Roberts show. So. <laughs> and, and we stay quite busy too. So yeah, we appreciate it. Now, I know I told you, um, Philip, that usually how I start things off, and I don't guess we'll change something that's worked <laughs> ever since day one. So I'm going to hand it off to you. And I know I have told you we start with our artist telling our listeners about themselves and you can start wherever you like however far back you like and just work yourself into your mu- your music uh, sure so uh, mm-hmm. again my name is Philip Broussard I um, wow this is it's almost like when I'm sitting down you know and in a, like at a job interview and they ask me you know what's what's your biggest weakness I, I, I'm sitting there go, uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, just yeah, I, I almost – We're just two people talking on the phone. That's just practically what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I <clears throat> I was born and raised in Washington State. Uh, I have a brother. Um, and, you know, I've been playing music since I was – I started writing my own music when I was 15. I picked up a guitar. And uh, – you know, I grew up near my grandparents. They lived right next door, and they, you know, I have a kind of an eclectic. I, I had an interview earlier with another radio program this morning, and uh, I mentioned that I had an eclectic music background. And uh, you know, they used to my grandparents used to take me to church on Sundays, and we'd listen to Elvis Presley gospel. But then I'd get wow. home, and my dad would put on Queen or Pink Floyd, you know, and uh, or Eric Clapton. And so, you know, I've got there's quite an interesting range of music that I was introduced to from a pretty young age. So, you know, I started writing music when I was 15 and, uh, you know, I, I just tried to play as much guitar as possible. And then a couple of years later, my dad passed away, uh, when I was 18 mm-hmm. and I kind of shelved so music sorry. for a while. I'm so, and... sorry. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I shelved music for a little while, and then, uh, and then, you know, I went in the U.S. Navy and spent uh, six years there, and got out and started kind of 
trying to reintroduce myself in the music world, you know, as a civilian, which is easier because you're not always deploying. So it, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier to kind of make a, make a career out of music when you're, when you're able to get some normalcy in life. But, uh, you know, my, my life has had its ups and downs. You know, I've had, I've had really, really great times where it felt really, really good. And I've had some pretty low times. Like when my dad died, where it felt really, really low. And all of those times, um, I've had music to help me get through some of those. And that, you know, even thinking back, music soothes the soul, which is kind of <laughs> ironic enough as it is. <laughs> it is what it is. But, um, it does soothe the soul. I agree. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, um, now you were. You were deployed in 2007 in support of Operation Iraqi Sea of Freedom. Um, when you look back on all of that, Philip, I mean, you know, I I know you. It takes a lot of out of a person, and uh, I, for one, do want to thank you for your service and time in the Navy. And, thank you. In supporting that, so. You know, I always try to do that. And I know a lot of our, um, and a lot of my artists who have been on are also veterans as well. So, yes, salute for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, my, you know, we, I was kind of raised in a military family too. My grandfather was in the Navy and my dad was in the Army. And, you know, I, Going back to the Civil War, I think my I I have relatives that served in the United States military, and so it's just it's kind of a family dynasty, I suppose, and uh, and it, it it set me up pretty well too. So I, I got to really this right. show my appreciation for the military too, because I, I was able to go uh-huh. to college based on on all that, and so it, it set me up in a good way. Awesome, and taking after your dad um, himself, who was also an artist, so yes, in the family, which I think is awesome. Yeah, so he was he was mostly singer. He tried to pick up the guitar, and it was just uh, not not a a lovely affair at all. He was, I in fact, that's how I pretty much started playing. I overheard him playing. And I, I use playing as a strong word, uh, playing this guitar he brought home. And it was it was like when a child tries to pick up a trumpet or something like that and is playing in the other room. It just gets to the point where you can't – you just have to leave because it's it's so loud and so, so you know, brand you – know, they're so brand new at it that they can't really make any kind of relevant music to it or anything like that. And so uh, I started learning how to play it just based on, on that. No, I'm wanting to put, put put something good through this instrument, and so yeah, it's uh yeah he he was definitely a singer though, and he, he almost sounded kind of like Elvis when he would sing. Now, are you self-taught, Philip? Did you teach yourself how to play the guitar? Yes and no. So I started out playing just by myself and learning. You know, I picked up a couple books and was was reading through them. But a couple of years ago, I got stuck in a, in a playing rut, and I just couldn't I couldn't get anywhere new, and I was bored. And so I ended up – have you ever heard of a band called Moby Grape? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I've so they were from the 19, 1960s, and mm-hmm. I uh, sought out uh, – he's, he's local near me. His name is Jerry Miller. He played guitar for, oh. for the, the Moby Grape. For Moby Grape, and uh, oh. he's on he's on the on the Rolling Stones best guitarists 100 greatest guitarists list from like 2002 or something like that. But so I sat and I you know mentored or he mentored me for you know a couple months and pulled me out of the rut I was in. And uh, yeah, it, it was it was nice being able to play with with him. You know, he's a legend. He, I walked into his house and he had okay. pictures of of him with. Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, and you yeah. got a picture of him with 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 John Lennon in there, and it was just it was really really cool. And 
so yeah, I had the opportunity to play with him for a little while and uh, yeah, he pulled me out of the rut I was in. And so now I, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty grateful for being able to spend a couple of months with him, uh, picking up some of his stuff. So yes and no for the vast majority of my guitar playing, mm-hmm. I have been self-taught, but there for a short time, I wasn't. So now, so now you are playing. Now we stay playing, um, Philip. <laughs> I guess yeah. we should call it start. You are picking, <laughs> and you are writing songs. And um, now you are signed with MTS Management Group. And we did. We just played um, one of your songs, "Just Want to Believe," mm-hmm. um, which was it played at the first of the show. So. Why don't you tell us about this song? So that song, just want to believe, is is basically about how, uh, you know, we all find ourselves in a toxic relationship every now and then, uh, you know, whether it's, a, you know, a romantic relationship or a platonic friendship. Uh, we always find ourselves in some kind of toxic relationship. And, and anybody that goes on Facebook you know, and read some of these statuses that people post. And since I since I've been on the radio, you know, getting gotten more radio time and everything like that, and been doing a lot of these interviews, I get a lot of I get a lot of friend requests. And so, mm-hmm. I you know I made the mistake early on of just kind of accepting them all. And I li- read some people's status updates, and they're like, you know, I can't believe you do this to me, blah blah. blah. And I you know, I thought you were a better person than that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it makes me sad, but we all deal with toxic relationships from time to time. And this song, Just Want to Believe, is basically crying crying out in a way that just says, you know, I want to believe that you'll be there for me um, mm-hmm. because, you know, your love is doing something to me, and it's not, not good. It's, 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 it's painful, it's, it's toxic, and it's, it's killing me inside. So... And it is basically just a plea to have people, have someone understand, you know, what their what their effect on us is. Sometimes it can be, sometimes people can realize that they're toxic in someone's life, and but most of the time people just kind of continue being exactly the way they are. Right, or in denial, maybe. <laughs> sure, sure. Right, yeah. I get it. Um, now, this song is a song that is being featured also on your five-song acoustic blues pop EP called Wave Link. I hope I got that right. Yeah. Which is, um, and you're actually, that is actually being brought out November the 18th of this year, 2017. Um, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> So how did you now, and I usually, I always ask this question because I'm, I'm the type of person, I like to, I like to know how things are put together. Uh (laughs) I don't know, I guess just for my visual, maybe, or even our listeners out there just to give them some type of how things are done, you know, just, just to give back, I mean, what? How did you come up with the uh, album wavelength? So, how did I write? How did I write all the songs? How did I come up with the name, the date, what? The which, name, uh, right? And how do you how do you decide what goes with what, and then coming up with this um, EP title? Yeah, sure. So, um, wavelength, uh, it's Sound comes and propagates through in in waves. You know, we, we hear sound waves, you know, and the only way we're able to hear anything is from the vibrations of the, the of the sound around us. And, and it, it might seem like new age hippie stuff, but that's not the point that I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that, is, is that if we look at a sine wave, a sine wave goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, mm-hmm. And... On on my album, there's songs that are that are the up, you know, the, the upbeat, happier sounding songs, and then there's the down. They've got sound, songs like 
like the song best friend, you know, that was about my dad that died. And, uh, you know, so there's songs that take you up and there's songs that take you down. And then there's songs kind of like right in the middle. There's a song called drowning on there. That's it's written in a minor key, but it's, it, it, it's kind of, it doesn't really pull you. I think pull you in one way or the other. I think it just kind of lets you, let you kind of take it where you want it. And so that, that song is just kind of in the midpoint there. And so that's how I came up with wavelength. You know, it just reminds me of a sign. This album just kind of reminds me of a sine wave. And so, yeah, the album art is going to, is going to have a sign. It has a sine wave on the front and everything like that. And so I, it, it just kind of, it, it's just a play. Uh, and it's, it's a poet, I, I guess, an attempt at poetry for, for the music itself. It just kind of sets the stage. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it's awesome. Because, and like I said, I, I like looking at the even the album album covers and even the songs on the inside of that cover and try to figure out. But you know, from my perspective, I know it's not probably what would be the right word, politically correct on my end, I guess, but yeah, I, like, I just always like, you know, put the songs together and, and think how that person thinks when he's writing his songs and putting together that one album. Sure. So, you know, well, since you have been talking about Best Friend, why don't we play that and we'll come right back. It sounds good. All right. So hold on, everybody. We're coming right back. of an eye in heaven is a thousand years on earth it feels like a thousand years since you left this place and I'd do anything just to see your face again I know I never told you enough How much you meant to me If I could do it all over again You'd hear it every day But there's no going back Those mistakes are in the past Many times could I have said that you're my best friend? How many days could I have spent getting you to comprehend? This life is going to end, and I'd be without you. A 
that this life is gonna end And I'd be without you, my friend This isn't fair So I did. I played a lot of coffee shops. I played at some bars. Um, I played at uh, a place called Columbia City Theater. I played at uh, the Skylark Cafe, which is a little bit, it's, it's you know, a good size venue there. Um, uh, so I play, yeah, I play pretty locally um, around my own kind of area, you know, but uh yeah, so bars bars are a good place if if anybody's looking to uh, you know get their you know get their start in music or start to you know try to figure out where to play. Good open mics are always a great great avenue. I wow. I love open mics. Uh, I play play house concerts too. You know, we'll invite a bunch of people and sit them in the living room and we'll play then. And uh, that's a pretty intimate setting. I like that. I like playing those smaller house concerts because they're just they're really fun to interact with people and people are there to hear music probably too, on, a, not, probably on a more personal probably on a more personal level too right exactly yeah absolutely and not just a bunch of people gathered together i like that sitting too we have a lot of those around athens georgia uh, um but yeah now have you been out like or have you even thought about touring, maybe? Yeah, so I have. Um, touring is 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 a funny thing. It's uh, the more you know about the anything, the better the better chances you have to succeed in something. And one thing that I know about the music industry is that uh, you know places are willing to book you as long as you're able to draw. You know good crowds in and everything like that. So, right. um, you know, so I, if I was to go on tour, it'd be with, it would be with like a, as an opening act for like a larger, a larger mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. group, a larger group, maybe somebody like Jason Moraz or Colby Kelly or somebody like that. That's, or Sean mm-hmm. Mendez. That's, that's who I would want to open for in order bef- before I went on tour. Because if I went on tour now, like I would just be spending a lot of time and, and energy and, money right. you know in an attempt to to reach new fans when i can actually just do that around here and then get picked up to to play as an opening uh opening act for a larger larger band awesome then do you do the um facebook live stream i do occasionally yeah it's uh i don't people are going to hate me for saying this but i i think <laughs> i think facebook is is uh it's a it's a great medium but it actually 
Mm-hmm. It's like the best way for putting your personal information, all your personal information out there for everyone to see. So uh, but, there's, yeah. there's sometimes that Facebook kind of gives me the creeps, but yeah, it's uh there is, there is uh sometimes I do do that. Absolutely. Well, I do see where you're coming from and it, and it, and it is. If you were to be exposed, that, <laughs> that, that does happen. And I know you can't be too careful, but yeah. But when you got, when you have, um, and I think it's great because if you are signed under somebody, and I'm one of these classes or NTS management group, I think you have a better chance of, now I, maybe I shouldn't say that because there's, there's always a chance, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Now, um, where to next, Philip? What would you like to do with your music? So within the next year, I always try to make a list of goals, and I try to have them be as specific as possible. Mm-hmm. So within the next year, I would like to be opening for like a larger larger act um, and perhaps going on tour, you know. But within the next five years, I want to be headlining, and uh, I'm going to be headlining. I've headlined, you know, a couple of shows here and there. And I've been a part of a band a while back that was that we headlined a really nice venue up in Seattle, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so I would like to absolutely be headlining in my mm-hmm. in my local neighborhood within the next year, and then you know opening for a national act within the next within the next year, year and a half. Awesome. Now, um, I love your music, um, Philip. What do you want? people to take home with them? Uh, a copy of my album that uh, they pay for. <laughs> <laughs> right, um, hello. <laughs> now, so, I mean, I my ultimate goal for music, I suppose, like for the music itself would be to have my songs have an effect on someone that allows them to listen to one of my songs and have that have it take them back to a point in time where they were struggling and maybe the music was able to help soothe their soul in a way that got them through it. You know, there's a song by Kenny Chesney called I go back and mm-hmm. you know, there's, it, it's, it basically kind of explains the, the exact kind of feeling that I want people to have. You know, I want people to hear my song, just want to leave and be like, you know, I was really struggling with, this one person at that time frame and this song kind of helped me realize that they were never going to come around. And so now every time they hear, you know, it immediately takes them to a certain spot. I can see that. Um, You're probably going to hate me for this next question, but (laughs) Um, so who is um, Philip Broussard? Who is that man? Who is that man? Huh? Mm-hmm. That's uh, I definitely don't hate you for that question. Uh, I just never know how to answer it because uh, right. I get that question occasionally. Who are you? You know, what do you, what are you about? You know, I don't. That's a good question. I mean, I have like a day job. Like I, I own a remodeling con, uh, remodeling company during the day, and uh-huh. and you know. And when I walk in, I'm fairly well known in my local area in all the hardware stores and everything like that. You know, a lot of the customers know who I am, and a lot of the, a lot of the, the hardware employee, hardware store employees know who I am. And, and so when I walk in there, you know, they all know me as the the remodeling guy. You know, I'm always buying lots of materials. I'm always, you know, working hard and, and everything like that. But that's not who I feel like I am. I feel like I'm a guy who wants to play, play music for people. I want to make make music that people enjoy. And I want to make, you know, I want I want people to be excited to see me in a musical setting rather than in a work setting. And so, yeah, this I went to a John Mayer concert earlier this year. He's one of my biggest influences. And uh, yeah, I had to. I mean, I looked up and I saw, you know, John Mayer on stage. I was about six feet away from him. I had front row seats, and um, you know, I had the opportunity to meet him too. And and you know, I just. I want to kind of understand. I want to kind of achieve at least a certain percentage of what he's achieved, and it's 
that that's who I want to be. You know, I want to be the, the guy that says create music for people to enjoy that that uh, that gets them from wherever they're at to where they want to be, at least from a musical perspective, from one that to soothe their soul in a way. I don't know how this. I don't even know if I'm making any sense. There you but, are. Uh, <laughs> But that's just how I feel about that, you know. That's, I guess that's less of a question of who I am and rather who I want to be. All right, well, that all makes sense to me. Now let's talk about your genre. Um, now I say I say blues, um, and uh, you know me, and this is just me. This is just me, and I think I dropped till it dropped off. <laughs> Okay, so let's call back in. But um, he dropped off. Did you know he dropped off? <laughs> Did he drop off? Uh, yeah, he dropped off. That could be his cell phone. But that's okay. I'll keep talking. And um, We were talking about genre. And, you know, I always try to stay, because I know a lot of people that don't like to stay within the genre because they have so many different types of music that they play from, you know, so let's see where he's at, but yeah, let me see if I can go out here and get him, I have another song from him, let's, let me go find a song, All Over Again is one of his songs, so we will play that and we'll, we'll be right back, hopefully, so hang on everybody. There were times I felt so alone Even though you were right next to me There were times I could sense that You just didn't want to be with me When you finally left on that long trip back home I was stuck sitting on one side of the couch Left to sob there all alone And I tried to breathe And I tried to sleep all day Wishing that all this pain would just go It was a beautiful surprise I didn't know where we should begin Cause all I know is that I fell in love all over again Couldn't wait to embrace you Once I realized You came all the way back to me Just to look into my eyes And as you're standing there I just don't know what to do Cause all I know is I have this chance Just to wrap my arms around you and Now I'm free to breathe And I can finally sleep I'm hoping that you'll be there for the rest of my life Because you knock on the door right outside You are a beautiful surprise I didn't know where we should begin Now, I, 
you know, I was talking about genre. Um, I I have been trying so hard to, and I know it's it's hard to stay away from genre because we are put into a genre from different sources outside of uh, outside of my realm, anyway. But um, as I was saying, I know I I have you labeled as a um, blues man. How do you, where do you put yourself? What category, I guess, if you will, or label? What do you have for yourself? Yeah, so I do want to apologize. My phone died while I was uh, in the middle of the conversation. So I, I'm glad you were able to play a song and, and recover oh, from that. I apologize. It happens. No, that's nothing. <laughs> we understand. Good. Well, uh, well, so if I had to put a label on it, I mean, it would probably be, yeah, bluesy, pop, folk, acoustic. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's hard because I, 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 I'm a singer-songwriter, you know, so – I'm an acoustic singer songwriter, but I can play blues guitar and I love to play in a, in a, in a, I can play in a power trio. And um, so I don't, uh, I, I don't really know. You know, I mentioned I had a kind of a pretty eclectic background growing up. And so there's lots mm-hmm. of influences from, from a lot of different arenas, a lot of different musical arenas that play into it. Um, so it's, it's tough for me to kind of define it because it's uh I don't know. It made somebody better with yeah. with genre genre labels can, is probably a lot better at this than I am. <laughs> well, that's why I always try to discuss it because, yeah, I mean, I know some people don't like to play under a genre, but you're going to be put under a genre whether you like it or not. <laughs> right, exactly. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be me that does that. Yes, yeah, the music industry that does that. And I guess you know, even if you're a country music artist, just like a rock and roll. Um, but now you can categorize any kind of music. People take stuff out of music all the time like that and put it wherever they want to. So, yeah, I don't know where that's going <laughs> to. Is there a label for that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, you know, I've heard people say that they were going to try to, um, what is it, not take that away, but try to do better by that. But I don't know how they would do better by that. I mean, it's already, it's been chiseled in stone, if you will, no pun intended there. But, no, burn gossip. But, um, yeah, you know, this genre has always been there, and I just don't think it's ever going to go anywhere. You're, you know, you're right. And I, and I ran into, when I was in college, I had a conversation with, had a conversation with somebody that, and college is an interesting place because there's all people, there's a lot of people from all kinds of different backgrounds and everything. And and there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of micro protesting going on. I don't know if that's the right word, but there's a lot of micro protesting going on in college, you know, where people all have just some problem with something that you never expected people to have a problem with you know you walk into a, you walk into a classroom and you find out that somebody has a problem with grandfather clocks and you're like what why like <laughs> of all the things but one one person i did have a conversation with did have the, her minor her micro protest was was genre and just the whole yeah, like a just a just a problem with just the word overall and how everything gets labeled and you know, sectioned off into its own little little world, and you know, I never expected that to be kind of a, a frustration of mine too. But it 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 has become it has become kind of a a micro protest on my part because I just I can't I can't put my finger on. I feel what like I it? I feel like I can move I can I feel like I can move in between several genres. You know, if I want to play blues, I can. If I want to play a pop song, I can. And so it, it's I I struggle with with just getting mm-hmm. kind of categorized. And if you had to be under a label, I guess, you know, now, and I don't know how far back indie music goes, but if you will, um, you know, I guess it goes back pretty far. You know, I haven't never really looked into that, but that might be something interesting just to look and see what it, what it all pertains to. <laughs> how do you label your stuff? <laughs> 
it. So, but I, you know, I think it's, I think it's cool. And that, this subject, ironic, ironically, comes up a lot of times on my show. So, I think it's an open discussion on the genre. And I have some musicians say they don't play under a genre, and I have some that say, "Well, you know, yeah, this is what I play under." So, but yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there is. And I don't know how they would label. That would be my label for you as well. But like I said, anyway. <laughs> and that's that subject. Now, do you want to tell people where they can find you at? Maybe on social media and other places around. Yeah, yeah. So my my, if you just search my name Philip Broussard on Facebook, you'd be able to find me there. Um, as well as YouTube, I, my name is not super common. Um, it's not super easy to spell either, but, uh, so yeah, but if you search Philip Broussard, B-R-O-U-S-S-A-R-D on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Mm -hmm. you, you're able to find me there. And I, I love it when people reach out too. So if anybody wants to send me a message through Facebook or anything like that, I'm always happy to reply. Awesome, and we do we do promote a lot, or we try to. I just haven't been my upper game this week, but um, with Michael, <laughs> with Michael Stover, and I do have a lot of other people that are behind us as well, keeping our show afloat. And there is a lot of PR going on. So, but yeah, if you have anything coming up or a show that you're going to put on, or even the promotion of your music, like what you have coming up, coming up in November. I mean, we we happily promote big time. <laughs> yeah, so. definitely. And I always try to keep in touch with with the radio hosts that that have had me in, on their show and everything like that. I I mm-hmm. love chatting with with you guys, and I love um, talking music and and getting stuff out there. Awesome, we love it too. And and like I said. Maybe um, this coming up next year, uh, whenever you get started, maybe on another EP or another single, maybe we can have you back on the show again. Absolutely. I would love that. So that would be great. Um, now, do you have anything coming up? Recently, I mean, do you have any kind of show that you're doing? Or are you mainly writing and playing or and things like that? Yeah, so uh, I am playing a lot of little venues up here in Washington. Um, you know, I'm always trying to write new music. Um, and so oftentimes, like, this five-song EP is, is, not, represent, is not a good representation of, of all the songs I've written. It, I probably have about 30 songs that are backlogged uh, that I've written that these five just made the cut for this one. Um, so there will probably be a full full album come out within the next within the next year or so, a uh, full production oh. band and everything like that. So that's, that's something people can look forward to as well. Um, but, yeah, so right now I'm just pushing the EP and, and wanting to make sure people, people know that I exist and uh, mm-hmm. they're able to hear – they're able to hear – you know what I have to play, and and uh, can see that I now, have a well, range of music. Now, when you um, when this new EP comes out November the 18th, I know Michael was promoting that, but do you have other sources and things like that on how you promote your music or your album? So, getting to, getting to talk with people like you and and everything like that, you know. So my manager also books me shows and, and helps me get get my name out there too. And so, you know, it's just – there's really no perfect formula, I suppose. It's just – I studied <clears throat> I studied finance in college, and so we – we I have a small marketing background too. And and so, right. you know, it's, it's all marketing. You know, it, I meet a lot of artists that say – and they – you know, one of their – one of the things they brag about is, oh, I don't advertise, I don't self-promote or anything like that. And I'm sitting here saying, well, 
how are you ever going to get people to know who you are right. if you don't promote yourself? Mm-hmm. That that's it's it's a, it's yeah. It may a lot of people just think maybe it's a little too prideful, but I'm sitting here saying no. You need to you need to do that. There's only, the only reason we know Coca Cola exists is because they have a brilliant marketing team. Yeah, even I have to do that. <laughs> Anything that, exactly. Thing like that that um, that you do, you have to have to promote. It's a lot of work promoting, <laughs> you know. But yeah, I didn't even know. You know, I'm I've been here one year since October the 18th of last year. We had our one year show October the 18th, and it is a lot of work. So. Kudos, Michael. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but you're doing Kudos. a good you're doing a good thing and I really hope you keep it up. Awesome. Thank you. We try. We're still here and uh you know, I think we're in a good spot because I think um you know, a lot of people have turned to the internet for your news and radio and music and things like that. So I do think we're in a good spot. So we hope that, you know, keeps us here a little while longer. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Keep it going. I'm trying to fill up, and I haven't done this. I've only done a couple of live shows, if you will. Um, like people actually playing their guitars on the air, but <clears> the <throat> phone is not a very good place to do that with. So I'm trying to no. think of other. Uh, 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 you know, I'm trying to think of other um, realms or other ways that I can get music out there like that if we do it live. Uh, it's going to have to be a speaker thing. But <laughs> we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so Skype, I think, is a good medium, too. You can, I mean, you can hook up a microphone and everything like that. And so I, I definitely think Skype is, is, is a good way to go. Yes. And, you know, I, I have another... Um, Network, which is on Spreaker, which I have not figured out yet. <laughs> I, I am just <laughs> not. <laughs> I'm very illiterate to these networks. It took me a little bit to learn blog talk radio, but we are here. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Maybe you can do a live show with us one day. So <laughs> there's always I'd be a more than happy. Awesome. Yes. Well, we are down to like six minutes left of our show. I know we are back here tomorrow night with, uh, who are we here tomorrow night with? It is live with Tammy Lewis. She is a new, she was a co-host, but we are putting her in the hosting spot. So join us tomorrow night at the same time, same place, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And then we are back here also Friday with Vivian Walker. And we have been all week long, and we're going to probably try to get back all week long, but I know the holidays are coming up, and a lot of people will probably be traveling after October and November going into Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving. So we hope to see everybody back here tomorrow night. Uh, Yeah, but um, I would like to thank you, Philip, for coming on. I'm trying to think. Did I play all of your songs? Let's see. I know you I did, did but yeah. we can, uh, we can go out maybe with um, the first one we did. Yeah, just want to believe. That's the the single that's been released. Um, yeah, the only that, people that play the other. I was going to say that the only people that that play the other two songs right now or have access to the other two songs are are radio programs that we send them into. So the just want to believe is definitely the single that people are. Um, able to uh, hear online and and everything like that. So awesome! You know, I'm all, I'm always excited when our show is the first to hear an exclusive single or an EP that's coming out. We've had a couple that's um, been on our shows that we are the first to ever hear their single. It's totally awesome. <laughs> so. But I do thank you again, and I would like to thank you again for your service, Philip. And I wish you the best of success in your music and in everything you do. And we hope to see you back 
on here very soon. Thank you very much. I look forward to it. All right, Elsa. I think we're going to go out of here with um, Philip. Just want to believe. And we will see you back here tomorrow evening. And thank you, Kathy. We are out of here. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Philip. Bye-bye. Bye now. Ever since we met I have worshipped the ground That your feet have touched Just to be pushed around I should know by now You're not here to stay It's something I can't get past And it's killing me I just want to believe You'd be there for me Cause one day I hope you'll see What your love's doing to me It's worse every day as you inch farther away Cause I don't know what to say I remember the walks That we used to take And coffee in the morning Just after coming awake And now those are replaced With angry words flowing free And I don't know what to do Help me make you I just want to believe That you'd be there for me Cause one day I hope you'll see What your love's doing to me It's worse every day As you inch farther What your love's doing to me It's worse every day As you inch farther away Cause I don't know what to say Hi folks, this is Mark Wilmot singer-songwriter of the Redstone Ramblers, owner of Trademark Instrument Repair, and proud supporter of the Paige Roberts Show on Intercom Radio. Do you want that old acoustic to play like butter again? You want to get that strat you got from your dad hot-rotted? Or maybe you want to put a pickup in your banjo? You can contact me for all your TLC. I'll be there for your instrument when it needs me. You can check me out at Trademark Instrument Repair on Facebook. Thanks again for listening, and remember, support your local songwriter. We're playing tunes that make you grin. Our music's better than it's ever been. So think of us when you need a show. We're at WIRN Intercom Radio.